In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I learned about doing a master's while working full time. So maybe if you're thinking about doing a master's alongside your day job, or you're worrying about how to like balance lots of things um, and competing priorities, hopefully you'll find some tips in this video to help you along. A couple of years ago, I was about to turn 40 and I was thinking about things I wanted to achieve and a master's had been on the list for a while and I thought that it was probably a good time to start looking into one. So I looked around for um, a course. I knew that an online course would probably suit me better. Um, as I said, I was working as a director in an accounting firm. I was doing 60 hour weeks and I knew that physically trying to get to lectures or like on site wasn't really gonna work for me. Um, so I was looking for an online master's because I felt like I'd be able to flex my priorities and my time like the best. So I came across this course at the University of York, um, which was a fully online master's um, over two years um, in innovation, leadership and management. And that really appealed to me, like both the topic area, but also like the structure of the course and the fact that I could do it flexibly in my own time. Um, meant that I thought that was like the best fit for me. I found it was important for me to think about what I wanted to get out of it, um, what I wanted to get out of the masters, what I wanted to get out of the process of studying and um, like how it was gonna fit into my life. So for me, like the why was just, I wanted to do some further study. I'd gone to university like the first time and then gone on and studied like professional qualifications, which you have to do in accounting. Um, but it'd been about 10 years since I'd like formally studied for anything. And I'm someone who likes to learn all the time and develop. And I felt like a master's would be a really good structure to do that. So once I'd kind of worked out why I wanted to do it, um, I also knew the things I didn't need. So I didn't particularly need a lot of like personal contact. Um, I didn't need someone who was gonna micromanage me. I'm quite self-driven. So I knew that I wanted quite a lot of freedom about how to structure my time, when to study, how to study. So um, again, like this online course through York really appealed to me. Um, so basically every eight weeks I'd start a new unit um, and you do like a number of units over the course of the two years. The first year was more taught units, um, all of which were pre-recorded online sessions. And then the second year was like some more of those sessions and then moving into doing the dissertation. So for me, finding like the right course in terms of like fit and delivery was really important. Um, and York came through for me on that. What I will say is I don't think that necessarily it was the most supportive. I think they could have done a better job of keeping in touch with students um, and finding out what you were trying to get out of the course and to like give some like peer support. And um, there wasn't really any kind of connection or community that you could kind of tap into. And um, they did have specific like chat boards for individual units but like I never really got to know anyone else on my cohort and I think had I done it in a more physical way or in a kind of perhaps even with a different university I would have benefited more from like the connections that you could have made on the course but it's not a massive downside for me but I think next time if I was looking for something I'd want to understand like what the community was and like what the support was. I only ever really got calls from the university around like payment of fees um, and they'd like mask these up as like oh we just want to check how you're doing but it, in reality it was all kind of driven about like the payment term. So I feel like they could have done some more around that. And when it comes to the dissertation part, which of course is like for any masters is a really important part, um, I feel like there could have been some more structured supervision sessions. I think I only had three half an hour chats throughout the whole module, um, which was kind of over a four month period. And I think probably either if they'd had some more sessions or perhaps a different delivery model would have made it feel a bit more supported and probably would have helped me like shape better research and ultimately got more out of the dissertation. Ultimately, I was really happy to get through the two years to complete my dissertation, which actually happened like during the first stages of lockdown in the UK. So I couldn't go to libraries or I couldn't kind of access physical resources. So the remote version actually of the degree worked really well in that case because my like, study wasn't interrupted at all, but it did allow me to get the dissertation completed, handed in and meant that I could graduate. So for me, I think the course fit really um, well in terms of like delivery and the time commitment. I think I was probably spending about 10, five to 10 hours a week maybe. So um, I'll come on to a moment about how I structured that time, but that time commitment was doable alongside my day job. Um, but I think any more than that and it would have been too much. So having the course over two years was probably really helpful. So before I started my masters, I did have a conversation with work um, to kind of essentially get their sign off. They didn't give me any financial support for my masters and they didn't give me any time off or flexibility. But obviously I did kind of flag to them that's what I was doing. I think it's showing them that I'm committed to developing, which has really been really positive. And also it shows that I can manage multiple like high value projects. Um, so although I completed my masters, 
was at the end of last year, like I was going through the partner promotion process and actually being able to demonstrate like my ability to um, manage multiple things and also like the time commitment I was willing to put in um, was actually a real positive for me as well. So like by virtue of studying for the masters, it also helped my day job. Here we get into like the nitty gritty of actually like how I made it work. So um, what I had to do was carve out specific times when I was gonna work on my masters. And that was easier once I got into the program and I understood when I'd have deadlines, when I had to submit assignments um, and like where my key crunch points were. So what I did was work backwards often and look at my work diary. So what I would do is book annual leave if I knew I had a big deadline coming up and I would carve out time at the weekends specifically to work on my masters and do the coursework. So like anything, like being organized is really important. So at the beginning of each module, which is kind of every eight weeks, um, I'd go through the time frame for the module, understand when those key dates were gonna be, and then um, make sure that I blocked out time to, to deal with those things. And the workload for some modules was harder than others. So some of the modules were things that I'd studied before, like accounting, so that was all relatively straightforward for me and I needed to put less into those. But others where you had like lots of reading or research to do were obviously gonna take more time. So understanding the time commitment over the next couple of months um, just allowed me to kind of flex my time and understand when I might need to put a bit more focus into it and when not to. The other thing I really benefited from was um, aligning where I could projects in the masters to my day job. So there were lots of opportunities through my masters when you were doing research projects or assignments that you got to pick the topic. So it might be on a theme like leadership or management or innovation, but I could pick the subject matter. So one thing I did that I think really helped was I aligned them to projects at work um, or things that were gonna help me in my day job. So it helped me to A, be really close to the subject matter, um, which was good for my dis uh, dissertation and my coursework because it allowed me to um, understand things I was already close to, but it helped me in my day job as well because I was able to bring back ideas from my masters to improve things at work. So for instance, one was around a project that we'd failed to implement and by unpicking it through my masters and understanding like the theory behind it and like what the friction factors were, I was able to bring back solutions to work that then allowed us to kickstart that project again. So it was a real good opportunity for me to improve my day job through the stuff that I was learning in the masters. Another thing I learned, and particularly towards the end in the dissertation, was around like good, good enough versus perfect. Um, I'm someone who has a tendency to want everything to be amazing and to be perfect, um, but like that, that wasn't always possible, particularly when I had like trade-offs in time. So um, my dissertation was due in the summer of 2020, which obviously was around the time the pandemic was kicking off, and work needed a lot of my focus to make sure that we were still like operating as we needed to, and we were adapting to all the challenges that were being thrown at them. So I think like in an ideal world, I would have had more time to do my dissertation. I would have had access to libraries. I could have had a more um, holistic view to it. But when it kind of got down to the crunch of my dissertation, I just had to do enough to get over the line. And I think if I had my time again, or if it happened like in a different way, I would have wanted to put more effort into my dissertation. Um, I got a good mark. I like got a merit, but I feel like, oh, the perfectionist in me like wants the like, the outstanding, the excellent mark, um, but I just had to kind of be okay with the fact that I had to make a compromise on that agreement and I aimed for good, like rather than perfect. Um, I think if you had just been doing your masters and not study, uh, not working, or if you it had been at a different time, then I would have been able to like put a bit more effort in, get those extra five marks and would have got like an excellent mark. But you know, like that's just one of those things that, like I couldn't have controlled, like the pandemic was kicking off and like it was more important that I got it done than it was perfect. One of the things like that kept putting me off doing a master's was just thinking, oh, like it's a two year time commitment. It's going to take me so long. But one of my best friends has a saying, which is like the time will pass anyway. And it's so true. Those years would have gone anyway. So you might as well put them into something productive and something you really want to achieve. And so of course there were like weekends where I didn't like do something social or I prioritized getting up early and um, to get a few hours in on my masters. But do you know what? It's a bit like childbirth, all that stuff's gone now and I don't really remember that, but I do have like my masters to fall back on and like the learning that I got. So understanding that time is gonna pass anyway, regardless of what you do with it. So that's quite helpful, I think, if you're trying to decide whether or not to do one or not to do one. I definitely say do it because the time will pass. So 
sometimes at the weekends I would get up early so I'd stick to my weekday routine of getting up at like between six and seven um, and I've got a whole other video on that uh, on the miracle morning so check that out if you're interested in tips on how to get up earlier but um, I found that like by keeping a kind of that weekday routine um, allowed me to carve out a few hours on a Saturday morning before the world woke woke up and I had other things to do but gave me a good three or four hour chunk that I could kind of hit up on my masters. There's a saying you can have it all but you just can't have it all at the same time and I think that's really important um, for us as we kind of navigate all the choices that we have but also trying to prioritise like what's the next thing you want to do. And then the final thing which I think as working women is really important is to understand you can have it all but just not all at the same time. So there were times when I needed to lean in at work and I had couldn't spend as long on my masters but there was equally times where I could book some leave or take some downtime and lean into my masters and especially as it was kind of cross-pollinating at work and like having positive benefits it was good to be able to like carve out that time and like flex my priorities as I needed to and again I think doing like the online course over two years just gave me a bit more flexibility in the schedule I think if it had been like a year-long intense masters there would have been some crunch points where it wasn't as helpful um, whereas I think like the way that I did it over a couple of years was more beneficial. So overall I found like the whole master's experience really beneficial. It gave me like more structure and um, an approach to learning. It'd been a really long time since I'd studied formally so that was really interesting to kind of revisit how you did research for instance and there's definitely things that I've learned that I'll take back into my day job. Um, and also just to read a bit more widely on subjects that I'm interested in but might have tended towards more kind of commercial books on but understanding some of the theory behind leadership and management has been really good for my day job um, and has definitely like brought me benefits. And I think from a personal level just being able to put some time and energy into something I really wanted to do that was quite like selfishly for me was also quite beneficial and the time management and like organisation tips again help me in general life but understanding like the time will pass anyway and you have to kind of start building some of these priorities into your life otherwise you'll just wake up one day and realize that all those opportunities have passed you by and um, so if there's something you want to do even if it's not like formal study if there's like something you're interested in you want to explore you want to start a new hobby I'd say just get out there and try it you'll find the time um, and then if you don't, you can just revisit it and try something different. So I hope this video has helped you. I'd love to hear your comments below, either if you're studying for a master's or you're thinking about it, or if this video has helped you in any way. I'm Liz and this is my channel, Simplification, where we give you the tips, tricks and hacks to help you navigate your career. And I hope you've enjoyed the video.